I actually was always very curious about the paradox. I, you know, I, I, I see a lot of potential in that in that building. Uh, I can it can I think it can have a huge impact. Whatever is going to go in there, I think will have a huge impact on the neighborhood. We have very high concentration of arts in the community. Um, I would like to, even with all the gentrification that is happening, is something that I always uh, try to keep to find spaces where artists can live and work and, and still uh, be a vibrant part of our community. So uh, there's a huge need for space. And what happens with a lot of the nonprofits, even artists, is that a lot of the times they don't need that studio, or that space, or that event space for 24-7. So you're starting to have more of, some people call it co-op, there's others that they call it incubators, and there's all these spaces that are created that is um, to, to give the opportunity for people to share the space. If it didn't have historical designation, this building would be worth three million dollars if you work it out per buildable foot. The city has these restrictions on the building, it, the building's been sitting empty for years. The previous owners had uh, tried to rent it out with not much success. Is that best for the community? I mean, you know, you have a building sitting there for forever, uh, vacant. Um, it's on a corner. It's, it could be one of the flagship locations of the area, but, you know, instead it just sits there. I mean, I understand there's uh, a, certainly a a commitment for the community, but you know, you look at these sellers, what are their rights? I mean, they lost what could have been an extra million dollars. So you also wonder, you know, what's the point of saving this building? It's not viable anymore in its existing uh, configuration. It became obvious to us that people were there to come and see a film. And, you know, I had hoped that they would take advantage of you know, and especially if it was crammed in here, that they would at least go out into the gallery and just sort of enjoy it and, and look and maybe even buy books. But none of that happened. It, it's just not what people came expecting out of a movie theater. So they just weren't as adventurous as I was really expecting. When you have a sort of critical mass of cultural offerings in any one particular space, it's actually to everyone's benefit. So where things can be fostered in not necessarily a particular complex, but also in a neighborhood um, is also really beneficial. So, you know, there's not uh, another cinema complex like this in the sort of immediate block in which we operate, but there are sort of similar spaces that could lend themselves to parallel um, arts presenters um, and their particular needs and uses. This uh, more recent development of essentially sharing space is, is what we're talking about, and uh, but to somewhat little more than that. It's sharing space with the intent of building a community around that space. And uh, I think uh, that sort of approach is, is somewhat inevitable when you have a downtown core that tends to, obviously, as it populates more and more, the prices tend to go up. Uh, first of all, it becomes less viable for someone to be able to afford the larger office spaces for themselves, especially if they're a startup uh, or a creative individual, a designer. Uh, it's a lot easier to have a piece of a larger space that you can share with people. So that's kind of an inevitable evolution of, of, of the economics of the, the value of space as it goes up. factor for, for me being able to keep going here is that uh, it's, it's based on the regularity of the renters. So nothing is a home run, but it's, it's slow and steady really is, is what it is, is that it keeps the place going where you don't you know, have a big drop off at any time of the year. And uh, that was something that uh, early on I realized I'd better <laughs> figure out. This space is 
tight and we're looking to expand. I need another production space. Um, sort of struggling to find a space that's right for us. We need a production space. We could use, you know, another space to maybe just sell ice cream sandwiches, you know, maybe another satellite location. That would be great too. So finding both a production space and an ideal location for another retail um, storefront is sort of challenging. You know, in the first six months, I was like trying to figure out how to make sure I had one show every night. And now I have four shows every night. Like I, I added a second room and I have two shows each night in each room. So, you know, there's like a hundred shows a month here. There's a community of people coming here to do stuff. And now I'm looking at how I expand. Like how do I do more stuff? And I'd like to keep it in this neighborhood. Like even between me having comedy here and the Piston two doors over having bands, you see so much cross pollination of, of you know, art and culture and people just hanging out together. So there's sort of the Jekyll and Hyde. There's the real estate investor. You can't do anything, you can't make any money with it, rip it down. And then there's sort of the, the kid who loves theater sort of saying, oh, wouldn't it be great if we could do something? 